Thank you. Thanks so much for inviting me. I, I really enjoyed talking with you and uh, this. This is a kind of a presentation that we've given to musicians very often. But as you said, you can be a creative and actually take advantage of a lot of the same sources of income. A uh, little bit more about me. Thanks so much for having us here. Um, as far as uh, my own uh, creative background, I've released 20 albums and over 500 songs with my band. We've licensed music to Disney and Viacom, written music for TV, films, and theater, including at Second City here in Chicago, where I'm broadcasting this from. And one year we released 365 songs in a year, a song for every day of the year. So we actually came up with a lot of music and a lot of stuff. And then after that, we actually wrote books about it in order to show other musicians how to do it. Because to our surprise, a lot of that uh, information is tied up in books that are really aimed more at people in the industry, as well as you know, maybe lawyers and other people who are sort of insiders, whereas a lot of the people that need the info are people that are running their own music businesses or their own bands or their own taking control of their own artist careers. And from there, we went on to write multiple books. We've written four books with major publishers, um, mostly at Macmillan, also with Random House, and we're contributors and journalists at Electronic Musician Magazine for many years. We had a column that went for uh, about two or three years, and we've written over 300 articles. What we've constantly researched is how musicians and creatives can make money with music. And in order to get that information out there, we speak regularly at conferences. Uh, I teach music business pretty regularly at a lot of uh, places and universities, and we consult. Uh, and as stated in the intro, we also have a management company where we manage talent and have our hands in a lot of different things going on. Uh, there's actually um, a book out there that is useful for all the musicians in the house paying attention to this. And we also have a newsletter that's based on this. If you want to check it out, I'll leave this out for a minute. We're actually going to be converting it over to the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship, where we're continuing to share this information. And we'll be adding a whole segment, uh, with any luck, on the talk that we're doing today, which is about making money with media as well, since a lot of the methods are similar. So let's talk about how to make money with media. We're going to move this along pretty quickly, like we just talked about, so that I can get to the methods since there's 30 of them. But first, I actually need to talk about how you would organize yourself in order to do that. So if you run your own podcast, your own show, your own YouTube channel, your own Twitch TV channel, whatever you're doing, you actually really need to think about the one success formula that everybody uses. That applies to whatever kind of business you have. In fact, what I'm about to show you in the next slide is true even if you're a multinational oil company, let alone uh, just running your own podcast. And it's a very simple formula. It's just what you make minus what you spend is what you keep. Now we've met a lot of creatives who end up spending too much and therefore your business isn't profitable. Uh, now, a big reason for this is partially because of spending too much, but very often it's because they did not add enough methods to make money from their media business. And if you look at the bullet list on this slide, my guess is that you'll probably have ideas in every single one of these as, you know what, there's probably something in every single bullet that you can make money with your own media businesses that you can tap. And don't worry, I'm gonna be giving you tons of ideas out of this particular talk that you'll have today. But even taking this list of high level categories, you can actually use this to start organizing your activities and coming up with more ideas. That's a big way that you can actually add more to the what you make part at the top. <clears throat> Within each of these high level categories are actually dozens of revenue streams as well. So that's not, those are just the categories on the high level. You'll see how they fit. You'll probably be able to categorize them in your head as I start going rapid fire through all of the 30 methods that we're just covering today. And by the way, those 30 are just the start. There's really hundreds and hundreds of ways to do that. So what approach should you take in order to do this? 
I'm going to give you a very straightforward way to think about this. Think of it in terms of tap, boost, and reduce. You assess where you're already making your money in your business and determine which of the revenue streams that you want to add. And at the end of this presentation, you'll probably have a bunch of ideas. Feel free to take notes. Definitely go to the different links and, and things that we talk about here. They'll be good. Once you find out what works, this is the, the step that a lot of people skip in order to make a good business out of what they have. They forget to boost the ones that are working really well. And of course, also reducing. So once you know what, what's working, you cut away the ones that don't. Because don't forget your costs include time and energy. And so you want to really be smart about what you're spending your time on as well as what you're spending your money on. There's a couple takeaways that you really should think about. One is that revenue development is not solved through marketing. It's I've run into so many artists of all sorts and creatives and people who have media where they actually start with promotion. But the thing that's often missed is that if you're going to promote something, the thing you should promote is the thing that makes money for your business, not just getting fans. And so very often you'll find somebody actually starting out and getting a whole bunch of followers, which is great. But the problem with that is that it doesn't directly make you any income. So usually marketing and any campaigns that you do for promotion actually include the way to make money as a big part of it. The other thing is revenue development is not solved by getting discovered and then picked up. In fact, very often any production company that picks you up wants to pick up the ongoing business that you have and take a percentage of that. And very often that actually works against you. We've seen plenty, plenty of creatives where once they understand how to do this, they actually can either be an equal partner in the contracts that are given to them, or they actually say no because they're already making plenty of money on their own and they're not really getting anything that they couldn't do for themselves. If there's one central idea out of all of this to keep in mind is that you can't buy lunch with likes. So just because people are actually liking your video or thumbs up or whatever it is that you've got going on, that doesn't directly result in income. The things that we're about to cover here are, so if you follow the tap, boost, and reduce method and add more sources of income, that's when you're going to see your business start to be a lot more successful. So let's go into it. We're going to actually carve this up into various ones. So this is going to start with broadcast revenue streams, and you'll see that each of them basically have categories that are really relevant to you as a media person. So first, let's start with number one, content distribution. You're making content. The next thing you can do is distribute the content through services that actually pay you money for distribution. So one of the things you can think of, for example, for your podcast, if you have one, is DistroKid. DistroKid will allow you to have your all of your podcasts uh, going through, let's say, Spotify and all the other paid services uh, in order for people to listen to it. Anybody who's a subscriber to that can actually subscribe to your podcast, and you're actually going to make money for every stream. That is not much money, nor is YouTube. Um, you can actually make a lot more if you, you start using things like Tubi if you've got something that's audiovisual. And I'll talk about this in a little bit, a little more than that. But one of the key things you should think of is once you have the content, you actually should find methods that you can actually charge people for access to that. We're actually going to get even more clever about that in the next few methods. Next is paid content access or pay-per-view. So this is when you're actually releasing something, but nobody gets to see it unless they pay money for it. So when you're building an audience, it really makes sense to do that for free. You want to get as large an audience as possible. This model is called the freemium model. There's actually an interesting book about this that launched and actually solidified a lot of these ideas called free. It's actually a book called free. And what they talk about is the fact that distribution on any kind of digital media is so inexpensive that you can actually use it as 
casting a wide net in order to getting a huge audience and then just charge a small percentage of people for access to premium features or premium parts. We're going to actually riff on that in a little bit. We'll talk about very clever ways to do it, but you can also actually just have a few, uh, a complete paid model. You can think of pretty much every streaming service as having a paid model. It just so happens that in this case, you're not paying each particular creator. Netflix, for example, would pay somebody for, let's say, a documentary, and then they'd pay, for example, for access. That said, you can use something like Vimeo or Tubi TV, which have entirely different models to, to have a full charge for access. Vimeo allows you to actually just have a pay for access type of set of services. They charge some money for it and some percentage. But as a result, you can do things like them. These two are not the only ones. Uh, Tubi TV, by the way, you can think of that like a streaming service that unlike Netflix and Disney Plus and all the other ones, Hulu out there, is that they're a little more open to just accepting material from everybody. So you should check it out. The thing about it is if you go through the front part of the site, it'll actually be towards the viewers. It won't say, hey, here's where to submit. In fact, any place where you say, hey, here's where to submit is not about getting a huge audience on it, and it's not actually one you should use. So you actually do more of a business to business transaction with Tubi and reach out to them. Um, these two are not the only ones. There's lots of ways to do paid content, but keep in mind that your show could be charged for. The thing that I highly recommend, though, is number three. You make the, the content free. You distribute it through things like Spotify using something like DistroKid, which gets you access for it. So you're getting just a little bit of money. And then you make some of the content premium only. To be really clever about this, you actually ask a really interesting question of your guests. Let's say you have a podcast, for example, and the question could actually be something that's just a little bit racy or a little bit interesting or a little bit risque or touches on a tough topic that everybody wants to hear about. You actually ask the question in the free part of the program and you say that the answer is available if you become a member. You're going to see this as a theme throughout this. This is your best method to do it, not letting other people collect money from you for you, but doing it for yourself. Patreon is probably the best known method to do this. I'm going to touch on this later, but you can actually do it yourself using something like MemberPress, which allows you, if you have a WordPress website, to just charge for access to content. The nice thing about this is the content itself actually starts leading the way towards people paying you money. You actually can actually take your show and make it live appearances as well. Once you have that live component, you can charge for tickets for it, which is very handy. You can get extra income out of this by having VIP tickets and charging more for your whale fans if you actually have, let's say, a special VIP section that's in the front. Now, you might not have heard this term before, whale fans. I'm going to talk about that very briefly. Think of it in terms of carving up segments of your fan base between minnows, dolphins, and whales. Your minnows are your, your fans that are just giving you a little bit of money. Maybe they're at the $5 level. They're actually maybe just buying a t-shirt, maybe something small. Your dolphins are the ones who are kind of more in the middle. They're buying, let's say, multiple pieces of merch. They're at the $10 level of your memberships if you have like a Patreon or something like that. And then there's the whales. The whales are paying lots of money because they really love what you do, and they might be paying hundreds or thousands of dollars. It should be no surprise to you that most of the income for most of these media companies that are doing it are coming from the whale fans. So that actually is between 50 to 80 percent based on a lot of analysis that you can see out there, which means that if you're actually putting stuff out there, you need to make sure to make your whale fans very happy. VIP tickets is a great way to do this, and you're gonna see a lot of examples throughout these 30 ways to make money with media that actually follow this model. Eventbrite is the way that you actually charge for tickets if you want to use a service. If you want to run it yourself and you have a WordPress site, you can use the events calendar plugin. What that will allow you to do is charge for tickets from your own site and you actually keep far more of the money than Eventbrite. Um, there's good pluses and minuses to both of these and there's many other ways to do it as well. I'm just giving you a couple ideas so that you can see how this works. 
Also, number five, once you have special guests, your special guests have a following themselves, and actually you can charge for access to them, either virtually or in person, and that actually allows you to have another whale or VIP option. It also allows you to reach to entirely new audiences, so it's a very good way to grow all of your media to actually have guests that have a very large audience already so that you can pull them in. So let's move on and talk about the broadcast content revenue streams. So this is actually how you make your content make money for you well beyond what we just talked about on having the premium segments, although that's part of it. First of all, the output of your show itself is something that's very handy. The show recordings and content. This includes the video separately from the audio because some people just want the audio to it might surprise you that some people just want the, uh, let's say the podcast style, even though you have a video component to it. And so you might want to carve it up and do both, but you can also automatically generate transcripts. Otter AI is an example of a site that will generate transcripts for you for a fee. There's many others out there that you can use to do this. Once you have a transcript, that's more content that actually is something that you can charge for. But it gets better for that. If you've tried the AI sites that are out there, and I've done this before, by the way, take a transcript, put it in there and say, please rewrite this as if it's just uh, an article. And then you can also say, please rewrite this as if it's a book chapter. And it will do that. And it will actually do a very good job of a very solid draft. What this means is that for every single thing that you have, you can get a blog post a summary, a bunch of small carved up more interesting things to say on social media. So you have social media content ready to go. Number four, you can actually get an article out of it. You can get an uh, entire book chapter so you can sell books of this stuff. And of course, you still have the transcript itself. And these are all extra content that you get out of the same show that you did by just spending a few extra minutes. Patreon, of course, allows you to have the membership access to that content. It's a great reward. It comes straight out of it. Shopify and WooCommerce are ways for you to sell downloads. Those are both good examples of places that allow you to sell it directly. And of course, as all of these have, the links are actually there to show you not the only ways to do it, but just a few ideas of how it works. Now, my favorite way to do things is to actually have a membership and patronage, and then you have great rewards that people want. This is probably one of the most important ways to make money for media that, that we have. We just needed to ease our way into it. The reason why this is great is because people pay you on a monthly basis in most cases, especially with Patreon, to pay you uh, regularly and have their credit card charged. If you use MemberPress, you can do it yourself and get a higher cut. Patreon does take money and they actually have some paid methods to do it. But the great thing about it is it becomes stable income. So if you look at the business side and you actually put on the business hat of your media business, you can actually know what a stable set of income looks like. And then some of these others, which actually may be bursty or happen from time to time, they may be irregular. Actually, you have the irregular income on top of very stable income. Between the both of it is the full amount of income you have. And it actually makes your business, the what you make part, pretty stable and something that you can actually start paying the rent with and know that you're gonna actually get all of your bills covered. So I cannot recommend enough getting a direct relationship with your fans, making great rewards that they want out of the content and everything else, and enticing people constantly to sign up so that they're paying five, 10, 15, 20 dollars a month for it, as long as you have the rewards that are tempting enough for people to sign up for. You can allow fans to donate or tip you directly. This works very well for certain types of musician artists or performance artists. Your online tip jar can include something like PayPal, Venmo, and Square Cash. There's lots of other ways to do it. I'd say at the minimum, you want PayPal and Venmo. And the great thing is you can actually add the links to any kind of talk or webinar that you're doing or if you're doing a live performance. Like right now, you're on one. It happens to have a chat. If I happen to have been running this and was trying to make money for it, I'd actually add my tip jar to as a link in the chat so that people can just click on it. I would also add a QR code and make it visible to the audience somewhere 
that people can see behind me. This actually works relatively well, especially people who do regular performances online. The next one is something that I could spend an entire hour or maybe even three on, and in fact, as part of the Making Money with Music course that we put together. I'm going to describe it briefly here. I'm going to add leave time at the end so that you can ask more questions about it. But if you have not ever tried or figured out how affiliate marketing works and affiliate links, I'm going to describe it briefly. You really need to explore it on your own. I'm going to leave this slide up for just long enough to explain it. Feel free to type any of these links into your browser and check this out while I'm talking about it. How it works is this. You sign up to become either an Amazon associate or if you go on Commission Junction or Rakuten, you become a publisher. This allows you to actually affiliate with online stores of various types. Literally, pretty much every major brand you've ever heard of probably has an affiliate. Those affiliates are actually very, very happy to receive new potential customers. They want you to send them customers. The point is that you actually have to ha find brands that associate well with the media that you make. And once you do that, you can actually provide links to things that people can buy online that are re related to it. If they click on that link, you get a percentage of their purchase. So that is to say, if you go on associatesamazon.com and you link to a large screen television and people spend $800, you will get something like, for example, 5% of that purchase because they bought it. And it gets even better than that. Because they clicked on that link, if they buy anything in the next, it usually is around 48 hours, and it depends on the associate and affiliate program. You have to read the terms. Whatever they buy, you actually get a cut of it. So even if you linked to a stick of gum that they buy on Amazon for a dollar, and then they go there, and then they end up buying the large screen TV, it doesn't matter that you didn't link to the large screen TV. You get a cut of it and everything else they buy. If they had a shopping cart, but then they had not bought it yet, and then they go on to their e-commerce site, whatever one it happens to be, and then they complete the purchase, you still get a percentage of everything that they buy. So you want to be including affiliate links in the content and everything that you do. This includes QR codes and everything else. There's a lot more to this, and I wish there was time to talk about it, but we need to move on because there's other types of affiliates. That includes affiliate style show sponsorships. So you'll find out there, there's an awful lot of different affiliates that are actually happy to sponsor your podcast. They don't pay you direct money. They actually just want the business. So what they do is provide you something like a discount code. For example, uh, ours is making money with media, MMWM. I might say, hey, use MMWM30 and plug it into this service. And if you do that, you'll get 30% off the first month and you really want to try it. I'd make it part of my content. And then just by dropping in that one code and of course adding it to the chat and just a, like kind of a mini commercial in the actual content, anybody that signs up, you tend to get a bounty for it. You get basically a one-off payment. And that actually adds up really well if you reach a lot of people. You have seen this, I guarantee it. All of you are in the media zone you actually are probably watching a lot of podcasts listening you've probably heard these and probably wondered about them this is how you do it audible is an excellent example but you'll actually see many affiliates using it so this is where you can go to cj.com or rocketen um, which actually has dozens and dozens and dozens of these and they will have this style of uh, code based thing the good thing about this one is that you actually don't need a, a website URL. You just need the code and tell them the name of the thing. Let's say it's, uh, I think there's something called Harry's Razors out there. You give a code, they just find Harry's Razors by searching in, in Google and you don't have to provide the affiliate link because as soon as they put in that code, you get the cut. So let's continue on. The broadcast content can include talking about your merchandise and selling it online. If you haven't done it before and you haven't made any merch and you don't want to ship merch or make merch, you don't have to. Print on demand is something that's another thing that you should check into if you've never run into it before. Printify and Printful are actually really interesting services to look at for that. They aggregate many of the ones like you see on the bottom. If you've never seen um, any kind of print on demand, here's how it works. You upload an image and you basically say, stick this on a shirt and let people buy it if they want. You set the price above their minimum price and anything above the minimum price that you set, you make. 
Now, a lot of the direct Redbubble, Zazzle, and Cafe Press, a lot of their agreements are done such that you really won't make any money. So you really need to go through sort of the business to business style, like Printify or Printful, if you're going to do it. That's what I'm here for is to navigate you through it. But I highly recommend you go to Redbubble or Zazzle or Cafe Press, try uploading an image and see how easy this is just to see the huge array of items like mugs, t-shirts, whatever you want, onesies, uh, everything you've ever seen, you can actually slap an image on and all you need is the image. And by the way, it costs zero dollars. That means you can have things available for sale for nothing, provide a link to everybody through the chat on any kind of broadcast that you do, or maybe it's in the description of your YouTube video or things like that. And suddenly you're making money on merchandise. So let's talk about broadcast platform revenue streams. We're on number 12 out of 30. Channel memberships. Uh, if you've never seen this before, check out Twitch. Twitch has the ability to sign up as a member. As a member, you get a few extra features. Uh, if you've never seen Twitch before and you're in the media business, you need to go to Twitch immediately right now and try it out, see what it's like. It's a broadcast platform, but it's more than that because it actually lets you get a cut if you send somebody to become a member and they become a member of Twitch, you usually get a bounty, very similar to the other. The downside of this is that you, you only get the bounty and you don't get the regular monthly income out of it like you would um, if you had your own membership, which is why I said number seven was so important, even though we're on number 12 that lets you do it. But if you happen to be on Twitch already, you may as well turn on this income stream. This is true of other broadcast and streaming services. So check out the ones that you're already on. And by the way, you can broadcast to all of them if you happen to have a stream. So what we're doing right now is just on Microsoft Teams, but I could just as easily hook this up to something called uh, OBS. And if you've never seen OBS, it's the Open Broadcasting System. You need to check that out right now. Once you go onto OBS, you can actually use something called restream.io that will let you take a particular stream off of your computer and restream it to every service at once. That is to say, you can go live on Twitch and Facebook and Periscope and YouTube and, 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 and to all of them. And since you're on all of them, now you actually have a chance to reach a larger audience. So these channel memberships are actually something you can activate for all of them. You also can get ad share on all of them. You usually have to sign up to become a partner. All of them have different restrictions on this. Some of them make it really hard. Uh, you'd be surprised a lot of times they cut it out, but it's definitely worth looking at and seeing how ad share revenue works. If you're on a platform, you may as well turn on every income source for the platform. You can also get tips from your streaming platform from your fans. Now, we talked about tips just a, a few items ago. We're on number 14, and it was in the single digits. But the thing about tips like that is it goes directly to you. That's fantastic. You should always do that as part of your content. But a lot of times, if you're on Twitch, if you're on Facebook, if you're on you now, you'll find that each of them has their own tipping system. So Twitch has something called bits. Facebook has stars, you, you now has bars. And if you've not seen these, go ahead and open these up in your browser and check it out. And then search on Twitch bits, for example. Uh, actually, probably the best one to look at is you now bars. They actually do a really good job. People use these bars in order to do things like applaud when they like something that they've seen. So that's sort of like a spur of the moment thing. It's not just a tip me. It's just, hey, yay, you know, I did the thing and they get excited and they do it. So it's definitely worth checking these out. They take a big cut of these. Of course, they're thrilled to have people uh, tip their uh, content creators because they get a chunk of it. But you may as well tap this if you happen to be on the platforms. And now we're making money off of this and the ad share and the memberships. So these stack and they don't get in the way of each other. So it works really well. So let's talk about some business to business revenue streams. We're going to change direction a little bit. We're on number 15. Naturally, you can actually let people pay to appear on your show. Once your show gets an, a large enough audience, they actually will want to be on it and you can charge for this. There is many media businesses that work this way, including ones that you think are very impartial, like news programs. They actually let people pay to get on them. 
So you can run the same type of thing. Uh, I would say you should do it ethically. You should definitely let people know um, that you know these these people are there. Sometimes you want to let them know what's sponsored. Sometimes not. It's up to you on how to do this type of thing. It's a business to business activity, so that's why you don't see any links right now. You'd be running it yourself, but it's actually a way that a lot of media companies do it. Advertising is another thing that you do this. So here's another concept that you should have in your head called surfaces. The surfaces throughout your media show are all possible advertising slots. So that's physical surfaces. And you might be able to see my camera. I really don't have anything here. I'm in the control room of my recording studio at Fort Knox in Chicago. So this one, this one's not really made for broadcasting, but if I were to have a show, I would actually make sure that the backdrop here actually had ad slots and I would charge people to get access to put their ads there. You've seen this before. You don't even think about it when you look at sports events. The same thing is true of this. This is also true of digital or virtual surfaces. So overlays, chat promotion, show description text and web pages. If you're using OBS, the open broadcasting system I talked about earlier, it allows you to have chirons and little things that flow across the screen anytime you want. Those can also be ads if you wish. So you actually have the ability to do overlays and all types of interesting things. I have a link for Google Ads. That's just a very simple way to start adding ads to your website. But there's many ways to do this that I've described over here. And if I had links, it would probably fill up the page. So I just described it for you how to do it. A lot of them are business to business. That's your best way to do it once your show grows large enough. And of course, once your show, even before your show grows large enough, you can actually sell commercial slots. 30 to 60 second slots, however you'd like to do it, is part of the content itself. These slots are usually on a B2B basis, so it's not as much about hooking you up with a link as actually hooking you up with local businesses that want to get to know you. Now, if you're doing a, a show, the place to start is your local businesses. I usually tell musicians, for example, that the backdrop on your, um, on your stage should actually do the local pizza place because they'll actually throw you a little bit of money to get on there because they know that hungry drunk people might come over and actually want some pizza afterwards. The same thing is true of your commercial slots for local businesses. Make it easy. All right, so that was B2B. Let's move on to fan base revenue. We're on to number 18. Um, generate recurring monthly revenue by starting a membership VIP service or partnering with a patronage platform. This is the overall key one that, that I mentioned before, but the other one actually talked about the content that you were doing in it. This is the center of everything that you have going on. I think it was number seven before, and it's not a repeat because the general thing about this is to actually put together all of your activities, not just the content that we talked about earlier, and making sure that they are generating lots of extras. People want stuff, and in fact, um, one of the things that you can use in order to get people to sign up in the first place is to have such an overwhelming amount of stuff the first time they sign up that they can't help it. Hundreds of images, lots of extra footage, something that they can download, put it all together and use that to do that. Um, the other thing you can do is a crowdfunding platform. Now, your crowdfunding is usually for special projects. You can also use it to pre-sell merchandise or pre-sell, let's say, a documentary that you're going to do. You get a lot of people to fund it under something like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Launchpad, Artistshare, many, 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 many others that you can do out there and do a whole campaign. Now, a lot of campaigns are about trying to get the word out and trying to get lots of people interested. You will have a media show. You will have an audience that's already interested. So you have a very easy time of running a crowdfunding campaign since you already have eyeballs and earballs listening and watching everything that you're doing. So it makes crowdfunding more straightforward. One of the key rewards that you can have in order to entice people onto the membership is to actually allow fans to be in the credits or if you have a large enough pat platform, people want to get seen and heard on it. Sometimes they want to put messages in the actual uh, thing i've actually seen video people make video games and then actually include images from people on it i actually paid for one a little bit ago just because i liked uh, the people who were making it and i was like sure i'll pay a little extra and have my logo in the game that's kind of funny uh there's lots of ways to do this this happens to be a great reward but you can charge people for this on a one-off 
basis. Credits are one of the key rewards that most people want, actually, as a sort of higher end. And if you do this right, the whale ones will be major credit. They'll actually appear maybe as like a, a key uh, person in the credits of a film or documentary that you do. Another thing is that live or on the air or privately, fans usually want to get access to the producers or writers or talent. When I say talent, talent, think of the talent as the people in front of the camera, the producers and writers are the people as it were behind the camera or behind the microphone that don't actually get heard. And between all of it, they often want to get direct uh, access. Now, if you're a musician, you can always do a one-on-one -on -one private concert. That's something that's actually pretty easy to do nowadays, that you have a virtual platform. But the actual writers and producers are of interest to people who really love shows because they want to say, what were you thinking of when you actually did this episode? And wait, when this crazy thing happened on your podcast, what was the production crew doing? You know, especially if it's video or something like that. So it happens to be a great reward. And naturally, this can also be a ticketed event as a one-off uh, that you just charge once, or as my favorite thing is, a membership reward. We're at 22, we're almost at 30. Talent-based greetings or birthday or special event shout outs. Once you have your talent, and once your talent is known, and it's somebody that people really want to get a hold of, well, it actually becomes pretty cool to have them give you a call and actually wish you a birthday message. This is a more whale reward. It's something that you should actually be very careful about doing too much of. Your talent could get worn out. Uh, and if you're the talent, then you could get worn out if you have to do birthday messages every day of the year. Uh, of course, you can record them in bulk if you do this the right way and send it out at the right time. But it's a great type of thing that to add directly. And again, you could charge for it directly. There are actually entire websites that do nothing more than charge to let stars actually send you a, a birthday message or any message that you want, and that's it. It's just a one-off thing. It's not like a membership. There's there's many that do that. If you search out there, you can find them. It's something that you can add as a nice extra as part of your content, mention it at the end, and suddenly you'll get more membership signups or more people paying you direct. This one comes from the video game industry, which actually did a great job. Check out Twitch. And all the people on Twitch who are video game, known for just playing video games and making funny comments, actually fans want to play video games with them. And since video games can be played multiplayer and over the net, you can actually have a scenario where people will pay to play video games with you or your talent. It's incredible to me, but actually this is a higher ticket item because you can't. You, you can only have so many people playing with a uh, particular talent, and if there's lots of fans, well, you're only going to have a handful. But I say video games. I also say virtual hangouts because there's lots of other t ways to hang out online and virtually with people. Uh, you can do regular hangouts with the the whale fan whale fans every quarter, for example, every every season basically of the year. Uh, or you can interact as often or as little as you want, but it's actually a key thing that you can do as a reward. And like I said, this actually is something people will pay for as a one-off. Also, there's live event hangouts. This is the live version of this, but it goes well beyond just a hangout after the show. I've actually seen musicians do party bus, pub crawls. I've seen meet and greets. I've done that for authors before. Uh, pre and post show get togethers, of course, in the Q&A's dinner with the talent, whoever they happen to be. And I've actually seen entire travel trips planned. One one group was a uh, this one was a musician group, but it was one that does Irish drinking songs. And they actually had an entire Ireland trip that they planned that some of their biggest fans wanted to hang out with them. So they traveled across Ireland. They booked across Ireland. They had shows booked. So they made money on the shows, they made money on the merch, and they had people pay to actually be part of this travel package. So they got paid and paid and paid and paid again. So this is something to keep in mind, and it's really cool. I mentioned Patreon and member press, but you can also charge as a one-off, of course, as something people can pay for to do it. 
Finally, custom content. Uh, I've seen this plenty of times in many different things. If it can be customized, art, music. Uh, our art is a, a very familiar one where people will actually do commissions. You can also do commission songs, but there could be requests for topics for documentaries. I've actually seen that before for some people who do docu little documentaries on YouTube about a particular topic stream. One was doing science fiction shows and they're like, tell me what to do next. And they did They're like cover this show. And of course, the ones who are paying extra uh, or our membership rewards actually get to show the direction of what happens next. Uh, so all of these work out pretty well. We're nearing the end. Uh, we're going to get to merch revenue streams. I can spend hours talking about this. I've documented tons of ways to make merchandise. Instead, I had to just bring it down to categories. I mentioned on-demand merchandise. I'm mentioning it again because this is the way that you start. But there's a method to this madness, which is that after you have on-demand merchandise, the next thing you should do is actually find out what people are buying because the margin is very low on on-demand merchandise. You can have things for sale, but you're not making much. But beyond this, you can actually find out which ones are selling and then actually make an inventory out of it. And you can actually go to something like Custom Inc or Merchly or One Hour Tees, which are the links at the bottom of this, and they'll make uh, a bunch for you. And now your margin increases quite a bit, but you're doing it for an item that you already know that people are buying. The other aspect to this is if you've never tried Alibaba or DHgate, those two in particular, Alibaba in particular, it, this is where you get huge amounts of really cheap mass produced items. That includes apparel, but it also includes all kinds of other items. DH Gate is really based out of India. Alibaba is more um, the Asiatic countries, mostly China. And you'll find that not only Alibaba can you get huge amounts of things for cheap, although the shipping costs are really made for bulk, not one-off purchases. You'll find that there's actually saying, hey, you can actually commission somebody to customize anything that you want. And manufacturers will bid on your business and they will try and buy, uh, they'll, they'll actually mass manufacture any item you can dream up. So there's a whole world with this that I unfortunately don't have time to cover in this brief amount of time. Uh, just to show you the scope of things that you can do, there's lots of jewelry manufacturers that actually can customize things. Jewelry is a very high-end item. It's great for your whales. Charmsmith, uh, Metal Pressions, Custom Made, Kim Class. Try these, go to these sites. If you're interested in this as an item, if it matches the persona of your media and you actually can have some nice high end items. The nice thing about having high end items is that it makes a T-shirt looks cheaper. So you have a gold chain and your, your T-shirt doesn't look nearly so expensive. And finally, just for another set of ideas, we're on number 29. Um, you can actually make food, custom food. So for imprint, it's probably my favorite place to do this, but you can check out ePromos or My Custom Candy. Um, my M&Ms is a little more specialized than M&Ms, and Zazzle has just a handful. Um, but Zazzle is particularly easy and, and convenient to use, so it's, it's probably the simplest to do. Four imprint is better for kind of short runs, like when you put some thought into it. But this is where you can make food that's branded with your stuff on it. That means you can make your own uh, barbecue sauce, or you can actually make your own images that sit on a uh, little, little, the little hearts that you get during um, Valentine's Day. So any kind of things that you want to customize on this, you can be very creative. This is only the beginning of a massive topic. There's so many merch items. This is just a sample. I can go on and on, and it's interesting how many items there are. The key is that you choose items that are must-haves for your audience. Like your audience sees that, and like I've got to have that. So you really want to be creative about this. Finally, I'm at number 30, social media revenue streams. I bring this up because I see a lot of places talk about how to get your social media going for your media um, produ production, whatever you're doing. And it's always focused on promotion, which is fine. But as I talked about before, promoting just to get people 
to follow you isn't really going to do very well for you. So what you want is actually to make sure that it makes money. This means you should build in to your social media a way to make money at the beginning. This is a whole nother topic that I can spend another hour on and in fact did for the making money with music class. But let's just say not only can you put your affiliate links that we talked about earlier in social media and now you see how they weave together. You can do sponsored posts, meaning people are paying to get a, a post in there. People will even pay you to just like things because if you have enough followers, they know that if you like their page or their website or something, they'll actually get a whole ton of fans. So this is where the influencers live. But as a media company, there's no reason you can't also be an influencer and charge for it. There are entire... Um, websites and services that will hook you up with people who want to pay for this but you can also do this in a business to business basis so because this is a whole category uh, i'm going to have to leave this for the q a so really quick on the con conclusion as we talked about before we've got a newsletter that talks about this making money with music.com newsletter that's going to transfer over to the center of creative entrepreneurship and it's going to get broader to be media so please sign up for this even if you're not a musician um, and I'm leaving it open to questions. Uh, I'll leave this up right now just so that people can see the link. Uh, if I can turn back to my moderator right now, I am happy to answer any questions that came along, or if you can give voice to any anybody in the chat, please ask away. I love talking about this stuff. All right. Well, first things first, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Randy. So what I want you to do, as I've put, already put in the chat, please hit your hand feature up like so. And you will see the hand go up and then I will call on you in the sake of time. We only have nine minutes left, which means oh you have five minutes. So with that being said, say your name, ask your questions and please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, do not give a narrative. Just say your name, ask your question and let Randy answer. With that being said, Dustin, you got the floor first. Go for it. Okay, my name is Dustin Lee. I'm, I'm the Regional Career Services Director for IMS. Sorry, just a little bio. Well, my question to you would be, um, how? what are your thoughts on Anchor? Um, especially with Spotify, Anchor kind of goes through all the different podcasting along with Apple um, and things of that nature. Is that something that you can actually gain revenue from or is that just a, a useful tool? Um, you know, any particular one, the thing that I found is that they go up and down, like some of them become good and then they become terrible. I mean, I've been doing this. I, my first book came out in 2008 and most of the links in that book are, are gone. And the ones, some of the ones I recommend, I wouldn't recommend anymore. So it's like hard for me to talk about a particular service from that standpoint. Um, that said, you what you need to do is actually look at it, find out if other people have made good money off of it and find out what their terms of use are and where it fits in. Um, you are not going to make a lot off of the uh, distribution in general. It's just such a tiny amount of income that it's not worth spending your time and energy on. So what you want to do more than anything is have that direct membership and then sell access to that and then just use these platforms to get it out and loud and out there as far as you can is my my key thing. All right. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thanks so much, Dustin. Uh, Shane, you've got the floor. Say your name and ask your question. Hi there. Uh, Shane Palmer from Colorado Media School. Um, it's not kind of a question, but it kind of is. Uh, do you have any advice for someone who's been streaming on Twitch for about two years and has a hard time putting themselves out there on social media and procrastinates when it comes to making a YouTube channel for their content? Mm. Depends on their persona and the content. Uh, is it because of lack of time? I don't know. This is a, a like sort of a little bit of back and forth. But let me ask just a couple questions because this might be revealing for the group. Um, do you know what's blocking them from doing those things? Um, well, it's it's myself. Um, oh, I <laughs> okay. Um, I've always been a pr procrastinator, but especially recently between work and school and just kind of trying to find time to get streams in there and everything. Sure. Uh, it's just kind of hard to find the time to be able to do those things. Right. Yeah, and you know what? The benefit of them isn't so huge that you should feel bad about not doing it necessarily. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I wouldn't... One of the... I keep saying this to uh, as advice to a lot of the people that get involved in this stuff is that 
there's money, time, and energy. And if you lack any one of the three, you're going to have a hard time. You, you can actually do stuff with no money. Um, there's lots of things you can do with no money. That's actually, in some ways, the easiest that that I can talk people through. But if you if you actually don't have the time or energy, time or energy, it's it. Those are resources that are hard to get back. So what you want to do is prioritize the key thing to do next. I actually will say first of all, um, think of the ways to make money that you want to do. Not because some of these things that you're talking about are more promotion. It's it's just like I talked about at the beginning. And then once you know your money things, it's like, well, how do I get people to to do that? If you're gonna do, let's say, have do you have a Patreon or anything like that? Uh, I do not. Yeah, so that would be the place to start. Sign up for Patreon, and then make a um, uh, if you're comfortable with it. I'm not just gonna tell you to do it. <laughs> you gotta look it up and and see if see how other people who do what you do have done it. Look at the rewards they have. See if you can do similar, at least one similar reward, and then try promoting that reward plus a, a lure or a squeeze on content that they could get to sign up. And now your effort is on one thing, and it's something that will actually make you income from it. That's my oh. su strong suggestion. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. Thanks, Shane. All right. We have five, less than five minutes left. Please make sure you get to your question quickly. David, you've got the floor. Hey, Randy. I'm David from Illinois Media School. Quick question. What do you think about for a podcast, CastBox? And if you have a better idea, what do you think I should start doing for, for a good podcast? CashBox? Did Cash you say? Box. Yeah. I've not tried that one, so I'm not okay. sure about that one. What What is it? It's 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 like a podcast streaming service, but what would you suggest? Probably the best one to go with, where you can probably make some money, and it's more of a more trendy. To to be clear, to be honest, I I like um like Podbean works fine as far as just making a podcast and just getting it out there, but that's a service that you pay to make it to host it. I tend to do more with the content in terms of making money from it. The only way you're going to make a significant amount of money for distribution is, and I don't have this in the list because it's another level, but it's when they, they like your podcast so much that somebody pays you to make the content and you know, you've, you've got someone behind it. And that way they're thinking, Hey, I can do all these content methods that I mentioned before to make money from it. Commercials, for example. So the main thing is, uh, in that case, when it comes to the podcast, you can release it for free, but you can also release it on like DistroKid to get it to Spotify and everything else. Just get it out there and use that as the freemium model. And as I said, if you're focused on the, if you're just focused on getting an audience, go nuts and get it out there. But if you want to make money from it, make sure that there's a, some revenue streams associated with it and then make sure the content, um, uh, has something to do with it. Like these particular services, I was there at the beginning days of podcasting in like 2008. I used to make, as a band, we used to make theme songs for them. And like most of the people who were doing it then are, it just, the services that we were using back then are gone and the things that we were doing at particular times are gone. So you just have to be comfortable with the ones that you're using, but then also know the business intent of the the thing that you're doing and and line all that up together and that's when it becomes a an ongoing um, business activity not just a uh, something else like okay i'm going to make a little bit of money off of distribution thank you right. yeah sure Th thanks david justin you got the floor i'll be quick i'll try and make this lightning round Uh, my name is Justin Smith. I'm a student at uh, Cincinnati, Ohio Media School. Uh, I heard you mention uh, Patreon and a few things like that, that we can start getting people to subscribe and get monthly memberships off of. I right. just wondered if you could tell us a few more. Patreon has squeezed out the others. It actually started with such a low margin that the others couldn't really keep up very well. And so I didn't see, I haven't seen any viable competitors that are solid. Um, it also happens to be, I like to call it where the party is. A lot of people already have that credit card there. I think I'm paying at least 30 to between 30 and $50 a month to things that I like and support. So if, if somebody, your fans possibly are already on it, 
and therefore it's a really good one to use. If you are making more of a solid business on your own and you're really going to grow it up, then you use something like MemberPress or any of the number of number, a huge number of different ways to do your own membership service. And I use MemberPress because then all I have to pay is the, um, the, the payment processor percentage and I get all of the rest of it. And I have more flexibility in how I charge. But those of you who are starting out and not, you know, not, looking to to put a ton of time in the business side just sign up for patreon look at some similar things and look how they do rewards make some similar rewards and make your content so compelling on those rewards that people have to sign up for it and you will start making money on a regular basis out of it so i, I highly recommend patreon in that case okay thank you and what was the name of the uh, website where you said we could sell merch without even having merch oh um yeah i'll pull it up um here um Try, try it out um, with. Here we go. Try just check out Redbubble to see how it works. It's just, their terms are not ones that I I recommend right now. Um, yeah. And Zazzle has is actually really good for stickers. Cafe Press was sort of the granddaddy. It started the whole thing. Printify and Printful are the ones to go to when you want to actually take it seriously. People who do entire you can do entire businesses just based on those and in, in Etsy. If you're super clever and you don't even have to have a podcast, people just search and find T-shirts they like and buy stuff. So, and you don't even have to ship or make it; they'll do everything. All right, sorry. Back to you. Back to you. Uh, I know that Thank we're you. just out of time. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Um, all right. So right now it's seven thirty, but we only have one more person to ask a question. So Anthony, I'm gonna give you the floor. Ask your question real quick before we wrap it up. Yeah. My name is Anthony Miano, two-time Ohio Media School alumni at Cleveland campus. Are you planning on having any more of your books produced as audio books in the future? Because I am a narrator. Oh, excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Um, we are currently pivoting away from books and doing videos. That's what we're doing with the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. And therefore, I'm mostly doing uh, online material. So, but good to know. I've sent you a request on LinkedIn. Sounds Good great. Day. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anthony. Well, Randy, thank you so much. Last thing, any advice you want to give to everyone that's out there and everyone that's watching on YouTube right now? Thank well, you, Randy. This is Carl from Ohio Media School, Cincinnati campus. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Carl. All right, Randy, go ahead and give your uh, advice that you would give to everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say again, it's like if you want to get involved in this, in your media, um, whatever your media activity is, and you're doing it for fun or as a hobby, that's all good. But if you want to make it a viable business, which, you know, by going to something like uh, every one of the Be On Air programs that you have, and you actually take it seriously as a business, you actually start with these things that I'm talking about, like arrange it like a business to start. And pretty much all of your other activities will rationalize themselves really nicely into something that can be ongoing and can sustain itself. It's the number one way you can actually make sure that you continue to have a presence out there is if you make it a viable business as well. And so when you start with that in mind, it tends to work out really well. And I wish all of you the best of luck and the best of fortune as you go out there.